Deborah Deeson's The Pout Pout Fish, a book so wrong it inspired me to make a YouTube channel to warn people about it. The main character is a self-described pout pout fish with a pout pout face, though this seems to imply that, like his namesake the ocean pout, his face just appears to be frowning to human eyes. This is clearly not the case, as other sea creatures keep complaining about it. The first, Ms. Clam, literally suggests that he turn his frown upside down. The second, Mr. Jelly, expresses a wish that our hero wouldn't scowl, grimace, and growl. Then Mrs. Squid arrives, asking, how about a smile? Finally, Mr. Eight the Octopus flat out tells the Pout Pout Fish that his sulking is unattractive. At this point, you might expect the narrative to introduce another character, a true friend to Mr. Fish, who could tell him, don't listen to those jerks, you don't have to change yourself to please them. Or he could even simply ask, is something bothering you? You seem sad and I care about you. No such luck. A new character does appear, but she is explicitly described as someone the gang has never seen before. A complete stranger. She doesn't even get a name. She swims up to him, full-on kisses him on the mouth, and then leaves. Wait, what? Not only is that a gross invasion of personal space, I'm also pretty sure it qualifies as sexual assault in some places. And the wrongness doesn't end there. This violation of his physical being convinces Mr. Fish to identify with his attacker and go around kissing everyone else, perpetuating the cycle of abuse. With that big grin on his face, perhaps Mr. Fish has finally been pushed too far and lost his sanity. The worst part of this book is that none of Mr. Fish's so-called friends actually care about his feelings. The only reason they seem to be talking to him is to complain that he is harshing their mellow. Not that you can tell, of course, because clams, jellyfish, octopi, and squids can't really show expression on whatever they have that passes for faces, so they're all massive hypocrites. Certainly none of them is smiling. If you can see the premise that Mr. Fish's pout is an expression similar to a human frown and not a quirk of Piscean anatomy, that only means there is a reason for his unhappiness. Maybe he's filled with existential angst. Maybe he's lonely. Maybe his huge mouth is causing him body dysmorphic syndrome. Or maybe he just has a tummy ache. But he is not responsible for the happiness of all his neighbors, nor should he be. Giving this book the benefit of the doubt, the best moral I can come up with for it, and it definitely has a moral, is this. The best way to cheer someone up is to show them love. But it fails miserably in execution and comes off more like, smile, or your friends will hate you and follow you around spouting inaccurate cliches, and strangers will force intimacy upon you. Basically, nobody likes you when you're sad. This could be used as the basic premise for a decent dystopian novel, a 1984 where Doublethink is replaced with Happy Think and Big Sparkly Sister is watching you. People get sad sometimes. Fish probably do too. And you know what? It's okay. We need to be understanding, not judgmental. Don't read this to my kids.